Uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, welcome to today's uh, webinar. Today's webinar will be on uh, fluorescent guided surgery, uh, which is very uh, interesting and it's a very new thing in thoracic surgery. It is used for many purposes like localization of lung nodule, uh, looking for adequacy or perfusion of the conduit, like the gastric conduit when you're doing esophagectomy, for sentinel node mapping, and also for identification and delineation of the intersegmental plane. To talk more on this uh, topic, we have two very distinguished and eminent speakers. First speaker will be Dr. Man. Uh, I think we all are very familiar with him. He has spoken before in one of our webinars. Um, he's from Cancer Institute Hospital from Tokyo. And um, the second speaker will be Dr. Chang Jiaming. He is from uh, Jai Christian Hospital. He's the head of surgery, thoracic surgery there. Uh, Dr. Man will speak first, and then uh, Dr. Chang will follow him. I will not reintroduce him again. And then we will we'll leave all the question and answers uh, to the end of the section after Dr. Chang. And before I hand over this talk to Dr. Professor Man, I would like to thank uh, Carl Stoss for supporting this webinar. I think without wasting more time, I will just hand over the podium to Professor Man. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Can you see us right? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Agassi, for kind introduction. I am Ming Moon from Tokyo, Japan. I have talked to the Japan Clinical Oncology Group study for early stage lung cancer at a previous six webinar in this July. Today, my topic is uh, fluorescence guided segment technique. And this lecture includes the technical aspect. In Japan, the indication of segmentectomy has been increasing because uh, Japan is the first place country with much number of the CT scan per uh, population of 1 million people. So the indication, the detection of the small size brain cancer has been increasing as well. By the way, the Korea is the fifth place. I introduced the JGOG study. Uh, there are two study uh, regarding the segment technique. So one is the JGO 0802 study and the JGO 1211 study. Uh, the JGO 0802 study is the most important study, which is the randomized control trial between lobectomy and versus segment technique for radiologically invasive lung cancer. And this is a picture uh, with Dr. Okada and Dr. Suzuki. And Dr. Okada is a famous about anatomical segment technique. And this is his book of Atlas of Segment Technique. And this is a Bible of uh, Atlantic Surgery in Japan. And the right side is uh, Dr. Suzuki, is the principal investigator of Jacob the right there to study. So this final result it will be uh, reported soon. This is the schema of the right segment three segment technique. You can see the segmental bronchus and artery and inter segmental vein is important. And these structures are uh, needed to divide it. And then we need to expose the intersegmental vein. You know, this is a bit to see is the intersegmental vein between the segment two and three. And this is a V1B is the intersegmental vein between the segment three and segment one. So we need to expose this uh, intersegmental vein to the distal side. But on the other hand, we cannot see the intersegmental border on the run surface. Uh, this is a main issue of segment technique. So we need to confirm the intersegmental border on the run surface. This is the two ways. Uh, one is uh, using segmental bronchus, which includes the uh, inflation deflation line. And some surgeons use uh, using the uh, ICG injection through the target segmental bronchus. And other way is the ICG forensic method using the segmental artery. Uh, today's topic is this uh, ICG forensic method. This method is uh, reported by Japanese thoracic surgeon, Dr. Misaki, Kagawa University in Japan. Uh, he's my Japanese colleague. He used the prototype of IRT. After dividing the segmental artery and bronchus, so he injected the ICG intravenously. So 
you can see the clear intersegmental border like this. So he put some mark on the, this border uh, using the pottery. And they evaluate this marking continue to the intersegmental structure by microscopic examination. So this rise the uh, correct intersegmental brain on the right surface. This slide shows a characteristic of uh, in the in green. So after intravenous injection, the ICG bound with plasma protein in the viscerals. So if infrared light is lighted, we can see the chlorinescence wavelengths using the near infrared circoscopy. Now regarding segment technique, in the target segment, uh, we usually divide the segment of our artery first, so it looks dark. On the other hand, uh, in the uh, residual segment, the primary arteries are intact, so we can see the ICG fluorescence. The border between these two areas is recognized as a segment of brain. So before we decide the surgical procedure using the sensor CT only, so this, um, in this particular patient, a uh, nine millimeter pre region located in the left segment one plus two. But recently, we usually use a 3D reconstruction to know the anatomical variances and uh, how to uh, select the segment taking. So this is a bronchus and palmar artery. So at first, we confirm the bronchus. In this particular patient, this is a B1 plus 2, A plus B, and this is a B1 plus 2, C. The next step is a confirmation of the palmar artery. In this particular patient, uh, there are uh, two branches of the uh, A1 plus 2A, and this is a B1, A1 plus 2B plus C. This is another one. You can see the two branches of the A1 plus 2A, and this is a common trunk of A1 plus 2B plus C. And this is the bronchus and palmar uh, vein. So in this case, the, this is a B1 plus 2A. Uh, which is the uh, uh, intersegmental vein between the segment one plus two and segment three. And this is a Brian plus two D, uh, which is the uh, intersegmental vein between the segment three A and one plus two C. So another branch is a uh, intersegmental vein. So we need to divide the uh, other branches. So in this work session, uh, we, we can make a virtual segment of brain like this. If I click the uh, branch of the A1 plus 2, so we can see the virtual intersegment of pain. In addition, we can measure the surgical margin uh, between the tumor to the closest intersegment of brain. So here is a uh, fissure, so if this size is not the correct surgical margin. So now we can easily uh, choose the segment uh, resection. This is another workstation, a uh, Rayblast station from Xiosoft. Xiosoft is a Japanese company. So we collaborated the software development. And this is a 3D images. It's easy to understand. This slide shows the uh, left uh, segment six tumor. So we can see the anatomy after dividing the each structures. This circle is the uh, uh, cutting edge. And A6, and this is a B6 stamp, and B, B6 stamp. And this slide shows a comparison between the 3D images and the intravenous intraoperative funding. You can see the A1 and B1A and B1B right here. So after dividing the uh, B1A, uh, you can see the bronchus right here. After dividing the A1 branch, so you can see the bronchus right here. And this is the final aspect. So these figures show the 3D images are correct uh, comparing the operative funding. So I will show you a case of the right segment, 9 plus 10 segment tape. Uh, in this case, this is a sensor city, uh, B8, 9, 10. The PRG region mainly located the segment 10. But you can see this branch is a uh, winner in B. This is a 3D reconstruction. This is a tumor. So the cranial side border is uh, relatively close to B6C. So we need to additional resection of B6C. 
And this is a V9B branch. So in this case, we try to uh, uh, segment 9 plus 10 segment X. So this is a larger intersegmental plane. So the cranial side is relatively close to the intersegmental plane. Intersegmental plane. So we need to do uh, additional resection of segment 6. So this is a video clip. Uh, the left side is the cranial. The right side is the color side. So you can see that these V6 from the posterior aspect. And here is a fissure. So you can see the V6 right here. So I made a tunnel. So when we perform the segment 9 or 10 segment technique, at first I divided the uh, intersegmental range, a uh, uh, frame between the segment 6 and basal segment, because it is easy to access uh, uh, A9 or 10 or B9 or 10. So I encircled. And I cranked the A6 using the basal tape. So segment six may be uh, defective. The residual side is the right. Then I injected the ICG. This is the first step of ICG. So you can see the ICG fluorescence. So you can see the clear order like this. So I put some mark using a uh, electrocautery. So the background is a relatively uh, dark in this uh, spice system. So I divided the run. So I already mentioned I uh, dissected the segment six to secure the cranial side margin. So I can easily access the uh, A9 plus 10. So I step with these branches. Then now I expose the broncas. And insert it. So when I perform the uh, segment to me, I uh, always check the broncas by uh, bronchoscopy interoperability because uh, this is a very important. If we uh, are misunderstanding the uh, broncas, we need to convert the lobectomy. So we need to avoid this situation. This is a branch of the panel wing. So I divide it after ligation. And then I try the second ICG. So, you know, ICG uh, metabolizes almost uh, within the 50 minutes. So we can repeatedly done this procedure in, the, in one operation. We put some marks. And then I divided the vampire kernel using a stapler around this margin. Uh, in this case, the PRGG region, so I omit the subcranial front dissection. But of course, we check the higher nodes using the frozen section. And this is a, a 11 IR front. And this is a 11 S lymph node. Of course, these lymph nodes are negative for cancer. This is a final aspect. So we have reported our initial result of this method. Uh, in this uh, paper, so demarcation appeared at 20, uh, 20 seconds after injection of ICG. And ICG fluorescence lasted three minutes. And contrast index peaked the 30 seconds after the appearance of RCG fluorescence and decreased over time. The effect contrast continued for about 70 seconds. So we need to put the marking quickly. This is a limitation. And there are some limitations of this method. 
the first, we excluded the patients with the malignancy of arising. The second, uh, ICG fluorescence can be observed in the lung paringa, but only the lung surface. Third, uh, it is difficult to for the patient with the severe anthracosis and the blue rash. And first, the contrast is getting decreased. And this is a picture of the, the maximum intensity is about uh, uh, three minutes after ICG injection. So like this clear. But uh, the clear uh, demarcation is a decrease like this. Why uh, does this phenomenon occur? I think there are two reasons. So first, in the lung parenchyma, blood is separate from both pulmonary artery and bronchial artery. So we usually injected the ICG after dividing both pulmonary artery and bronchus to shut down the Apart from the bronchial artery, but the broader decrease over time. And second reason is uh, almost ash is metabolized by the liver uh, within 15 minutes after intravenous injection. So naturally, uh, if the patient is a normal liver function, the ash is decreases decrease over time. And finally, the cost. Uh, you know, the, the cover system are a little bit expensive. This uh, left side is the right segment to segment technique. I already divided the segment of Adrian Bunkers. So this is the ICBG mode, uh, progressing mode. So we can you can see the clear border. So I can put the mark. But you know the background is uh, relatively uh, dark. So near the high, I cannot using the stapler in the IR mode. On the other hand, the right side is uh, other companies' devices. The background is a little bit clear. So there are two merit. So you can see the clear border like this. And uh, you can see sometimes the anthracosis is a uh, uh, corresponding to the intersegmental line like this. So this like this. So you can recognize the intersegmental border uh, easily yeah, because some answer coaches and props on the land surface are corresponding to the border of the ICG forests. In this case is a left upper division segment technique. So background is uh, relatively clear. So I can use the stapler in the IR mode. So you can confirm the uh, higher structure like this. So the brightness of the background is uh, some advantage to perform the anatomy class This is a uh, anatomy. So I can use the stapler in the IR mode. I think this being the real time navigation surgery using the IHG fluorescence like this. And this is a new device uh, from Carstor's Rubina uh, system. So white drive mode is uh, we can see the 4K images. Uh, unfortunately, this video clip is not 4K, but uh, uh, full high HD images. So after dividing the ring grab panoramic artery and bronchus, now I expose the panoramic beam. And this is a bronchus thing. So I dissected the iron uh, to the distal side. So I think that it is difficult to uh, completely dissect the hierarchy in the same technique. So that's an advantage in protecting. So some intra uh, segmental vein is uh, divided. And this is an ICG mode, you can see the clear 
there are no departments in the quad drive mode. So you can see the ICG for instance. And this is the border you can see here. From here. So quite right model is very clear in this uh, camera system. So I can use the step right in the IR mode. I think this is a real time navigation surgery. Like this. It's very clear. So uh, this is a record of uh, ICH Francis uh, method from 2013 to 2017. Uh, we have 149 patients. The cancer patient was 101, and the uh, median children tumor was 40. The mean uh, tumor size was 16, and the operation time was 169. Uh, Interoperative parameters was 22. There are no cases of conversion to open surgery. Unfortunately, the three patient had a invalid demarcation. These three patient had a severe surgery. But we uh, performed the total invasion method and we put uh, uh, some marks uh, under the uh, invasion definition line. So these three patient uh, simultaneously was completely done. The mobility rate was 8.7%. Uh, median chest granite was one day, hospital uh, stay was five days. There are no more therapy. So when an um, airplane landed at the airport, so guide of the illuminations and the bright background is uh, important for a safe landing. This may be the same as the performance in the death itself. This is my message, a uh, take home message. Uh, under the forensics mode, the clear background is, uh, uh, we can see easy detection of the interstate the roller. And we can use all devices that have uh, real time navigation surgery. If you have been interested in this uh, IGH forensics method and a new device, uh, please ask to start, uh, start tomorrow. Thank you for your kind of attention. Thank you, uh, thank you, Dr. Man, Professor Man, thank you. for the very informative and excellent talk. I think, uh, Dr. Chang, uh, do you mind just uh, continuing from there? So, I'll, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your kind introduction and good evening to everyone online. It's been a privilege to be here. And uh, I'm uh, today I'd like to talk about thoracic uh, guided thoracic surgery. I have nothing to declare. This is the outline of my speech. Uh, I will uh, briefly go through the how ICG and the near infrared fluorescence image over uh, how it works. Sorry if I repeat this. And I will go through three major applications of ICG and the near infrared in thoracic surgery, including lung segmentation, sentinel lymph node, and a subjectomy, and uh, uh, interspersed with my personal video sharing. Uh, since I'm new here, I'd like to show you my. Uh, operation setting, uh, just to let you have a better picture of what I'm familiar with and then maybe what I'm not good with. Uh, I started uh, from 2007 with pure three vets, three poor vets, and I eliminated the uh, system port to uh, two poor vets since 2009. And then finally, I go to uh, unipolar vets since 2013. Now for my most uh, long resection, I use unipolar approach and uh, I always stand in front of the patient and uh, I use scanlon vest instrument and uh, energy devices, including harmonic or ligature. But personally, I think uh, minimally invasive uh, surgery is the spirit. However, the 
uh, incisions and approaches and the instruments are personal preference as long as you are comfortable. To uh, set up the ICG and infrared fluorescence image, you need a 404, like the ICG, to be photo excited uh, by the photo excitation source, uh, including the laser diode. It always uh, be excited with wavelength of 778 nanometer, and it may emits a uh, near infrared wavelength of 830 nanometers. The ICG is a tricarbon cyanide water soluble compound always used for a non-specific contrast dye. Uh, it has relatively short half-life, only three minutes, and it's relatively safe. And the uh, iron MS by the ICG uh, would be uptake and the processed further by the INR camera system, uh, just to be distinguished from the background. Near infrared is between the wavelength of visible light and the infrared. Uh, in this particular window, the sum of uh, the absorption of the oxygenated hemoglobin, the oxygenated hemoglobin, water, and the lipid spectra reaches a minimum. So it would be the best for in vivo imaging. Traditional fluorescence images are like this. Actually, you can have only black and white image and they could barely do anything. The new uh, recent aug augmented reality uh, merges these two. Uh, fluorescence image to white light mode. So uh, it will be very helpful it, since you don't have to change between these two modes. And the recent upgrade upgrades to 4K ultra high definition resolution makes the image so sharp and the color is so pretty. I'm uh, very lucky to among the first to have hands-on experience, especially the stores uh, Rubina system. The most common application of fluorescence imaging in thoracic surgery would be the lung segmentation. Since subglobal recession, including segmentectomy and wedge recession, uh, has been widely evaluated for early stage lung cancer treatment, it's crucial to identify the intersegmental plane. Traditional inflation deflation method uh, is really uh, easy to use, but sometimes the border will be equivocal since the collateral ventilation. Selective inflation of target segment by jet ventilation is also a good alternative, but sometimes the bronchoscopy navigation is not always feasible. And the butterfly needle method carries a certain risk, especially the air embolism. Recently, ICG injection through intravenous or transbronchial approach has been become more and more popular. The transbronchial ICG injection uh, was started first by Dr. Sakina in 2012. And in 2013, Dr. O also used the ICG for bronchial stump injection. However, he used this without the INR to identify the intersegmental plane. This is Dr. Sakina's method of transbronchial ICG injection. First, you need a preoperative 3D reconstruction, CT reconstruction for surgical planning and the virtual bronchoscopy navigation. Secondly, you need to dilute your uh, ICG with autologous blood and you have to perform the virtual navigation bronchoscopy for ICG injection and you need this kind of balloon tip. And the third step is the operation with near infrared thoracoscopy. If uh, the, if the result is success, you get a long lasting dye marking of positive stain of uh, ICG like this. For transbronchial ICG injection, you need a precise target bronchus injection. Pros, you have clear intersegmental demarcation. Your stain will be long lasting and it also helps to define transectable vessels. Cones you may need to de depend on 3D reconstruction and virtual bron navigation bronchoscopy. It's technically demanding and the procedure time will be longer. And uh, it's almost impossible to recharge in case of wrong bronchus injection. As for intravenous ICG injection, uh, Dr. Misaki first in 2009 reported its efficacy, identifying intersegmental plane. In 2014, Dr. Tarumi first use ICG and infrared for minimally invasive surgery. 
and his successful rate in, in the segmental plane identification is 85%. In 2017, Dr. Moon reported an even 95% uh, successful rate. Dr. Moon is a real expert in the segmented domain. Uh, it's very good to have him with us tonight. For intravenous ICG injection, you need precise target pulmonary ligation, pros. You may not depend on so much on 3D reconstruction and the virtual bronchoscopy navigation. You have also clear intersegmental demarcation. And since it's negative standing, it's good for manipulation. It's technically, technically easy and the procedure time will be shorter. It also helps to define transectable bronchus and the cones. Its standing is relatively short. However, it's always easy to rechallenge. Now I'd like to share one of my case uh, with right middle lobe, a sub-centimeter uh, GGN at right middle lobe, lateral segment. I performed a right middle lobe, lateral segment, segmentatomy using a uh, high definition ina frozen sericoscopy and recorded with our Rubina system. First, after facial dissection, this is the cranial side, this is the caudal side. Uh, I divide the palmar artery branch A4 first, and later this is the B4 uh, bronchus. After transition, I divide the venous drainage V4. And I'd like to use or uh, combine the inflation deflation method for maybe 10 minutes. This is the effort deflation. You can see the intercost or uh, intersegmental border inflation deflation line here. Then we inject the ICG. I only use four to five milligram uh, ICG intravenously. And you can see the clear cut uh, ICG fluorescence and the line matches the inflation deflation line very well. So I quickly mark the uh, demarcation since the time will be short. Then we divide the intersegmental plane uh, using steppers. As we surgeons prefer a simple, straightforward, and effective method, uh, combine the inflation deflation method and the ICG IV injection, I think it's uh, relatively easy for all to use. Now we move to the sentinel limb node mapping. For sentinel limb node mapping, it's become a standard of care for some cancers, including melanoma and breast cancer. However, in terms of non-small cell lung cancer, we have a few problems. The first is the understage problem due to inadequate node sampling. Second, the lymphatic drainage patterns are sometimes variable. And further, uh, around 20% of sentinel limb node have skip metastasis. Uh, also, the micrometastatic disease within sample lymph nodes uh, is uh, estimated to be 16% of PN0 disease, or even up to 27% of sub-centimeter adenocarcinoma, which would increase threefold the recurrence rate. For uh, clinical lung cancer sentinel lymph node, is first introduced and uh, reported by Dr. Little since 1999 and followed by some others using blue dye, radioisotope, or both. But the results are suboptimal for these reasons. First is the radioisotope itself, including the injection time, low regulation. And the second, anthracotic lymph nodes might interfere. Three is the shine through effect, meaning false positive results due to increased background signal in nearby tissues. Last, the blue dye may destroy our anatomy. For clean, preclinical animal lung ICG sentinel limb node studies, uh, it was started since 2005 with pura and lung injection. In 10, 2015, Dr. Anayama and Dr. Wada first reported a transbronchial ICG injection with navigation bronchoscopy. In terms of uh, human clinical 
lung cancer uh, sentinel liminal studies, I'd like to show you two publications by Dr. Guillermo's group. The first in 2013 uh, is related to ICG uh, dosage. It's a phase one dose trial. They use transpural peritone, peritumor ICG injection. As you can see clearly here, as the ICG dosage increases, uh, the sentinel liminal identification rate increases. So if you, you, if you want uh, over 80% identification rate, you need at least 10,000 microgram of ICG. The second information is that uh, the sentinel liminal mostly are located at the same side of the injection. And the three quarters of INR positive sentinel liminal identifier is the nearby N1 stations. And the metastatic nodal disease are never identified within a histologically negative fluorescence positive sentinel liminal. And they have 27% sentinel liminals with a skip uh, to N2 stations. Their second publication in 2017 uh, uses a totally different approach. They use a bron a navigation bronchoscopy and the transbronchial injection method. They also modify their uh, ICG with albumin dilution just to increase the lymphatic retention time. Overall, they have 80% detection rate and one eighth of the sentinel limb not turn pathologically positive. And uh, of note is that in contrary to their previous study, 75% of sentinel limb nodes identifier were in N2 stations. Uh, whether this is related to different uh, uh, injection method or not deserves a further study. Now I'd like to show you a case of rhylo lobe lobotomy when I performed a peritumor ICG injection. First, I divided the, the palmar artery branches, including A6 and the basal segment of palmar arteries. Maybe after 10 minutes or uh, you can see peribronchial uh, fluorescence, but no obvious uh, peribronchial lim uh, uh, fluorescence positive uh, lymph node. Then I divided the right lower lobe bronchus and the inferior palmar vein. Then we move to a subcarinal lymph nodes. Still, you see a uh, lot of intracortic lymph nodes, but no obvious uh, fluorescence positive lymph nodes. So far, you can also see the fluorescence uh, at the hilum bronchus. Then we move to hilum lymph nodes in the group 10. Still, no signs of fluorescence positive lymph nodes. Then the group 2 and group 4 um, mediastinal lymph nodes. You can see here a little bit of uh, frozen positive lymph nodes. But it's the group two lymph node. And you can also see the peribronchial, peritracheal uh, fluorescence. This case, uh, it turned out the pathologically O negative uh, mediastinal lymph node metastasis. You can see the peritracheal of fluorescence uptake. Last, I'd like to move to a subjectomy. Since complication of a subjectomy remain high, especially the anastomosis leakage, even up to 10 to 25 percent, even with minimally invasive subjectomy. Previous studies regarding gastric conduit and anastomosis perfusion assessment uh, preceding techniques include uh, oxygen tension measurement, uh, light spectroscopy, uh, Doppler flow site uh, flow metry. All these methods, uh, they are actually not very successful. In 2005, Dr. Aka Okamoto first reported our, their ICG perfusion assessment in a uh, subjective viruses. In 2011, Dr. Shimada first used ICG for uh, subjectomy anastomosis platform uh, assessment. And in 2015, Dr. Zehedner first uh, correlated the gastric tube uh, perfusion to leakage. Uh, their overall leakage rate is 16%. However, only 2% with good perfusion group and up to 45% with 
leakage rate in less robust proficient group. And in recent uh, five years, it's proposed that the lack of ICG fluorescence as an in independent risk factor for anastomosis leakage is echoed by several authors. And uh, also the esophageal stump profusion is quite important for a successful uh, anastomosis. So far, the ICG studies are all based on uh, qualitative uh, measurement without quantitative measurement. Dr. Kumagai was the first to report uh, a quantitative measurement using the time of perfusion to the tip of gastric tube. He proposed that uh, to get a good anastomosis, it's better to uh, take the anastomosis in the area within 60 seconds of ICG enhancement. This is uh, one of my subjectomy. I used the ICG for uh, perfusion assessment. I apologize that this is recorded with endoscopic uh, INR system. Actually, we should use uh, open surgery INR system. Roughly, the perfusion time to the tip of the gastric tube is less than 60 seconds. And you can uh, recharge after you finish the anastomosis. As you can see, sometimes the uh, fluorescence image is much better in the straight muscle and uh, the esophageal stump rather than the gastric tube after you anastomosis are complete. At last, we have to keep in mind there are some uh, pitfalls of ICG assessment. First, the INR penetration is limited by obesity, venal stasis, and the anastomosis tension, and the systemic artery pressure variation, also the intramural ecchymosis. Further, the ICG optimal dose remains undetermined, and the, the ICG profusion interpretation is somehow still subjective. This is my conclusion. I'd like to quote this uh, famous phrase, I was blind, but now I see. ICG fluorescence image actually opens a brand new window, provides a whole new perspective of, for us thoracic surgery. You should see it for yourself. Thank you. This is uh, the facility I work in. The Jai Christian Hospital is located in Jai City, South Center, Taiwan, around a thousand beds. Our volume of surgery is around 1200 operations annually. And uh, it's famous, Jai City is famous for Mount Ali and the beautiful scenery, sunrise above the cloud sea. I hope we could travel again and have meetings face to face soon after this COVID-19. Thank you all for your participation. I wish you all good health. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Chang, for your very comprehensive and excellent talk. I think now we'll take, uh, we'll go to question and answers. I think there are a couple of questions. The first question is for Dr. Mon. Uh, this is from Dr. Padungat from Thailand. His question is, you mentioned that you send frozen section from highland lymph node. Do you also send interlobar or segmental lymph node for frozen section? Thank you for the question. Uh, uh, it depends on the case. Uh, I, uh, I showed my case today, so the PRG in your region. And uh, this, in such cases, uh, there are almost no case of uh, lymphonode metastasis. So in today's case, I uh, didn't send the uh, protection in the uh, lymphonode. But in the radiologically invasive lung cancer, uh, which is uh, uh, Consolidation to tumor ratio more than 0 0.5. We sometimes try to the segment technique for the uh, indication. So in such cases, we uh, send a frozen section, uh, pyranose and uh, interloba uh, lymph nodes. And if the lymph nodes are positive in frozen section, we need to convert the uh, Yeah, uh, this is my answer. Thank you so much. I think the second question is to Dr. Chang uh, from yes. Dr. Su, is from Singapore. 
He wants yes. to know if there's any diffusion of ICG across the intersegmental plane during transbronchial injection, very similar to collateral ventilation. Yes, uh, thank you. It's a good question. Actually, my transbronchial injection uh, experience is limited, but according to my review, it's uh, truly a problem since transbronchial injection would uh, cause the ICG to cross the intersegmental plane as we ventilation have collateral situations. Yes. Can I ask uh, Dr. Man? Dr. Man, uh, your, your accuracy of intersegmental plane with ICG is 95%. Uh, what do you do in the 5% where you cannot find the intersegmental plane during surgery? Yeah, so I, in some cases, I experienced uh, there are no, not clear uh, demarcation lines. So the uh, severe arthroposis is uh, broke the uh, ICG fluorescence. And in some cases, uh, the very brutus uh, lung surface, uh, there are no blood supply from the so in such cases, uh, uh, it is uh, very difficult to identify the uh, ICG fluorescence on the lung surface. So this Dr. is a limitation. Yeah. Very limitation, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Chang, how, how would yes. you approach uh, uh, cases where your ICG is not able to find the intersegmental plane? Yeah, so far, I, I as I demonstrated that I try to combine these two since uh, intraoperatively, we don't have the access to ultra-thin bronchoscopy to check every uh, detailed bron bronchus uh, anatomy. So I try to clump before I divide the bronchus first. So it's kind of like combine the deflation inflation meter and uh, the I I uh, IVICG to double check your anatomy. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Manda, do you do uh, ICG for lung nodule localization? No, no, uh, it's very complicated for the patients. So I think uh, I usually use a finger palpation during operation. So uh, I put some stitches near the tumor uh, using my finger palpation. So I uh, never do the preoperative localization. localization. Yeah. Dr. Chang, what is your uh, uh, mode of localization for GGOs and lung nodules? So far, mostly with uh, CD guide uh, localization with ICG or blue dye. And I have a few experience with uh, navigation, uh, electromagnetic uh, bronchoscopy navigation. I, I perform the localization myself because sometimes the sub-centimeter nodule is really beyond, beyond our finger position. That's a problem. But multiple regions, you, 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 uh, you, you cannot do the segmentatomy every time. So in Particular cases, if I have no confidence palpating this kind of lesion, I will ask my radiologist colleague to perform the CD guide localization first. Thank you. Dr. Chang, can I ask you, uh, do you do sentinel node uh, for every case or only selective cases? Sentinel node, no. So far, I, I will uh, just a few cases with this ICG since uh, I have the uh, hands-on experience on this 4K ICG for very limited uh, time so far. So I don't do that, uh, just uh, a trial. Thank you. What about uh, ICG for esophageal cancer, sentinel node? What is your experience? Oh, I don't have that uh, experience, experience so far. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. So Dr. Man, can I ask you, I mean, uh, you, you send the interloba nodes for frozen section. Do you think uh, when you do segmentectomy, uh, sentinel node sampling would be a good idea? So I, I think the uh, central node uh, navigation uh, concept of the lung cancer surgery is very difficult because, you know, the uh, lymphatic flow is very complicated in the lung cancer patient. In some cases, uh, lymphatic flow uh, to the shallow area. But in some cases, <coughs> the lymphatic flow is very deep area. So in such cases, uh, it is very difficult to identify the central navigation. And, uh, and another reason is uh, there are some cases the skip metastasis with, uh, yes. yeah, uh, this is a main problem of the lung cancer surgery. So the central con concept in lung cancer surgery is very difficult for me. Do any uh, Japanese surgeon do central node for lung cancer? No, almost no. No, nobody. So, 
yeah, after dissecting the all higher nodes and the mediation info nodes and check the sentinel node, but there are uh, no, it's not so good result. So uh, my, uh, my one more question I ask you is, uh, what is your experience with sub-segment technique? Yeah, uh, some, uh, some cases of the uh, high-risk patient, uh, we select the sub-segment uh, sub technique, but the sub-segment technique cases uh, almost indicate for wide wedge resection. Yes. So the, uh, whether we do the by the way, jurisdiction of our sub-segment technique is difficult to judge. <laughs> so it's, it's very case-by-case. Uh, case. Case, okay, all right. Uh, are there any more questions from the audience? I think if not, I think uh, we are done early for today. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor Man and Dr. Chang for taking time and giving an excellent talk to all of us. And also thank Carl Stoss for supporting this uh, webinar. Thank you, Professor Man. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you. Yeah. Thank you Dr. Chang. You. Have a nice yeah. day. Thank you. See you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.